Oh. I promise we're like so much tanner than this. Oh, we are so pale. Well. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing something I've been kind of wanting to do for a while. I just couldn't decide what I wanted to do it with. I've been seeing these like tier ranking videos lately. Like Cody Ko did it first and then Tyler Oakley recently did it with potatoes. So we, of course, in our gay content nature, are going to be ranking lesbian representation in television shows. This is gonna be good. We've kind of been like talking, but also we kept some elements of surprise. Like she doesn't know all the shows that I picked, but mm -hmm. also how we're gonna be ranking them might be different. Like I might be like, hmm, did this show like represent, you know, us in a good light? Or did and all the characters die? <laughs> so I'm ready to be the judge of gay content, so. We really are. We really are. Okay. We're the gatekeeper. The Not gay really. keeper? The first one being the L word. Really? You're gonna do that one first? No, go ahead and just do the L word first. Okay. This is generation one, right? First generation gen one gen. L word. So it has that like factor of, it was a different time. There are a lot of issues Issues, though with the L word. Biphobia. Transphobia. Transphobia. I don't know how to describe it, but we weren't there yet. And that really we sucks. Out of an A through F system, what should we give it? I would give it still, I'd give it a B. B for effort. I'd be, give we it can a B change for things effort. around. Well, it was one go. of the first shows to ever focus solely on lesbians. Other problem though with the show is that it was a premium service. So like, just like how we have Netflix now, back then like HBO, Showtime, those were like the premium services on yeah. cable so it wasn't widely offered to everyone the only reason yeah. I ever got to see it was because I got Netflix eventually let me pick a different one I'm just like gonna close my eyes because it's not like random okay Glee oh my god and that's what you missed on Glee <laughs> <laughs> This was my first show though, where like, I like had to awkwardly sit during like the lesbian scenes with my mom because like yeah. we watched it together and I was like mm-hmm I am just an ally. Queen. <laughs> Did you ever watch Glee? <laughs> I've only seen a few seasons of Glee, but it's not a bad show. Mm. I never got to the gay stuff, which really sucked. Yeah. That is definitely a show. Like, have you seen the TikToks where it's like, gay culture is pushing through three seasons just to get to like the gay scene? Yeah. That was me. I literally looked up on those wiki fandom pages yeah. what episodes Santana was like in, or like what episodes her and like her relationship with Britney were in. Ugh. That's the only episode they cared about. <laughs> Representation wise, I think it did a decent job. It showed Santana going through a really hard time, like coming out to her grandma. But my only thing with this one is that it's a classic case of falling in love with your best friend. Oh, uh, was Britney gay? Yes. Britney was a lot of things. I know, I know you haven't seen this one. There's just a lot of other problematic things with Glee. The way that they gaslit us with Demi Lovato. She came on for like two episodes and was supposed to be like- A permanent character. She was in a relationship with Santana for like two seconds. Yeah, that's disappointing AF, so I'm gonna give it a C. I didn't know that. Uh, Rest in peace though to Yeah, that was literally my first lesbian celebrity crush. Let's do next one. Your fave and mine. Way Will Wires. Way Will Wires. This is our oh my show. God. I would give it just right off the bat, I would give it a C. Seven out of ten. Okay, so seven, seven out of ten a for at least. I like goes through it. She, she does. gets like the bottom of the stick, whipped around, beat, screamed she, at. She had to kill someone. She had to kill someone. I don't want to like, spoil it for you though, but like it doesn't get better for her. We're only like on season four, but it does not get better for her. She definitely gets the worst out of the stick, and also everyone else. They meet their boy, like their boyfriend, for the rest of like the series, and like. She just one. goes through them she, like water. First girlfriend dies, like, yeah. it sucks. Oh my me. God, you're right. I didn't even think about that. When everyone talks about like the lesbian character dies, I think they're usually are referencing the 100, which I don't have in here because I've never seen. I didn't even realize that the lesbian dies in Pray Little Liars, just not the main lesbian. Also the fact that like Allie, I don't know if she ever explicitly comes out as bi. That's like another thing. It's very black and white all the time. Like I'm either gay mm -hmm. or straight. Or A lot of bi. these shows Shows they are very biphobic. They always play it as like an experimenting card. Like you yes. can just say you're bi. So yeah, I would also give that a C. Both of those, the case with them are just a little before their time. Let's do Orange is New Black. Ooh. 
The for. problem with Orange is the New Black is it's a great show. Don't get me wrong. It highlights the many injustices of the US incarceration system, but I feel like it's a little bit fetishized. Sure. Like the idea of like going to prison, like so weird. there's a like in the beginning it was like sex scene after sex scene. You think that was Netflix though just being like look at us like we don't have to censor like you linear TV people. That could be it but everyone was like oh my god like Ruby Rose. I think towards the end it got less fetishy and more like this is a real problem going on. It like became more about like the prison system rather than yeah. like LGBT problems which I really really admire. So yeah I'd give it a B. Okay. I'd give it okay. a B. I kind of want to pull out the stops on this pull one. Pull it out. <laughs> 13 reasons why. I don't even remember the gay characters. <laughs> very, very minimal. Okay, I only left this one in because somehow you and I finished the whole series. I don't even know how. That that was <laughs> by far the worst season I have ever watched of anything. Clay is the worst. It, he's like Jenny. He's like the Jenny from he's Straits. He's the Jenny. So Yikes. my problem with 13 reasons why, and the reason I kept it in here, it was because there was one lesbian character and her storyline was weird. She had gay dads and her whole thing was like I'm scared to tell them I'm a lesbian maybe mm -hmm. that is the case but like it was just very weirdly structured and she goes away she graduates I think and it's the last season instead of being like oh like we got like rid of a lesbian character let's add a new one no they had four gay male like couples zero lesbians I was mm -hmm. like, are you serious? It's a show for straights who are still uncomfortable with the idea of homosexuality. So they have to be like spoon fed, like gentle homosexuality. Like they can't be having any uh, like lesbians. Like that's too much. Like that's that's like food you need teeth for. Like it's so ridiculous. <laughs> that's a good metaphor. It's so ridiculous. Okay, let's go to an actual good Netflix show, Atypical. I'm sure when they created this, they did not think at all that like, no. They were gonna have like a lesbian cult following. I don't think they were going to make Casey gay really mm -hmm. until people kind of pushed for it. I think in like real life, she's a part of the LGBT community or something. Mm -hmm. Not really sure. So she may have pushed for it. I mean, I want to give this one an A really bad. My only problem is, is that literally the like last episode of season three, the most recent season, is when the lesbians get together and there's only gonna be one more season after this. So there's like barely any room yeah. for growth. That really sucks. It is like you were saying earlier, it's literally the show where you're like, hey Siri, like how long do I have to, oh, no. <laughs> It's like, it's like one of those shows where you have to like, be like, okay, like how long until like the gay sh It really is. Like I said, I don't think it was at all meant to be like a gay following kind of show. So I would give it an, I'd give it a, a B. No, I want to give it an A. <laughs> Only because going back to the whole like, falling in love with your best friend thing. Like, I really think that this one wasn't that. This show, it almost exactly portrays my high school experience of like thinking you just want to be friends with someone, but then realizing, oh, those friend crush feelings were like real crush feelings. Okay, well, you can give it an A. You only want to give it a B because it's not gonna last long. That's not anyone's fault. Okay. We started the show last night. There's very minimal, very minimal representation. It's a bad show, but it's so you it's so, okay. High school, it's so bad, it's good. High School it's Musical, a kid the show. musical, the series. <laughs> we started watching it because I was a huge HSM fan growing up. I had like go on cats. I had like multiple themed birthday parties. Anyways, in the show though, there is a lesbian mom couple. It's natural. Like it just felt natural. It didn't feel like you're know, like oh here's here's the moms everyone here they everyone. It wasn't some like, big uh, grand announcement because like the moms like it was very natural right because like I don't know if you remember when good luck Charlie which good luck Charlie's was different because it was on TV whereas mm -hmm. like linear TV you are force-fed what you see whereas mm -hmm. like on demand you literally have to choose to see it so I don't know if you like ever saw the scene the dad was like oh like I set up a play date with you know Sandy's mom and then the other girl was like oh I, I set up a play date with her mom too and then both moms show up to the house and they're like oh we both were we're talking to a different mom so it was a little like grand announcement kind of thing whereas this one was very just like here they are and they are normal people i don't think 
anyone else in the show is gay besides they're having like a male person play Sharpay. I'd give it a D. Okay, well, but going <laughs> off of parents, so I also put on sex education because oh, of the lesbian yeah. moms, which this one I feel like is a little more problematic. Very overprotective of him. Yeah, there's like sometimes like that like stigma of sometimes it's like the gay parents are like over caring. What's wrong with loving your kids and wanting them to be successful? Apparently a lot. <laughs> I want to give that one a D too. I put on this one. I don't think you've ever watched it, but we should. What is it called? It's called Faking It. Yeah, I've never, never seen that show. It was an MTV show, got canceled, but basically it was all about falling in love with your best friend. It was supposed to be in like like a weird high school in Texas where like being weird was the normal thing to do. So the two girls to like stand out, to like fit in, they pretend to date each other because like it's a it's the cool thing to be gay. Yeah, you see where the problematics coming in? Yeah, and then the one girl ends up falling in love with the friend. Oh yeah, the yeah, fakeness. yeah. You've told me about this show. Yeah, yeah. we're gonna give that one a solid D. Uh -huh. Only reason I'm not giving it an F is because at the end of the day it was a lesbian show on like real TV in like 2014 like that was pretty cool for me I remember I would literally go to my friend's house to watch it because I didn't like want to watch it at home <laughs> next is skins okay I've only seen a few episodes of skins mostly the first episode like six times but enough to know that there is like LGBTQ representation in the show I think they do a very good job it's very rarely like I don't think really ever stigmatized we don't have to get too into that one because I know you haven't seen it oh yet. you're straight off the bat straight off the bat giving it an A okay the only thing I don't like is like in the third generation they paint this one girl off to be very like non-binary in the beginning mm -hmm. and then like she never dates a girl she only dates guys and every time she dates a guy she gets like girlier and how she dresses and when she breaks up with that like I don't know if it was intentional or if I've just seen it so many times that I've caught it mm -hmm. like every time she breaks up with them she kind of goes back to like more tomboy dressing anyways last but not least the best show a plus we love it's my a straight to the top the l word Generation Q, so good. It's so like inclusive. I agree, like it does a really good job of representing as much as they can without boasting about it, like we were mm -hmm. talking about. That's like my biggest issue is whenever it's like fireworks and like confetti yeah. when it's like yeah. a gay person comes onto the scene. Not only is there good representation, but there's good music. There is. It's like just really, I think it's pretty well written. My only so. problem with it is that like now that I'm thinking about it, it doesn't really show a healthy relationship. That's true. Yeah, um, very true. Uh, <laughs> Bet is divorced. Shane is like on the rocks with her wife. Alice is like in a threesome, which is fine. Like a throuple is fine. Ruffle. They seem like they're still like unsure about it. So like that mm -hmm. one's like TBD of whether it's like healthy or not. Yeah. We're but I nice. do like how they show like real issues at the same time. Like the just idea. as much as I yeah. want them to be like showing a healthy, like good relationship. I also like the idea that they show like they go like we go through the same things and everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you feel about our tier list? Honestly, mm -hmm. I see some similarities. Like these were very like just before their time, premium viewing, like too sexy. These were like all like yeah. mom representation on garbage. Hot garbage. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, if this is not a call for like I'm so glad L Ward got uh GQ got renewed. Yeah. If you get that with atypical, that'd be great. I think skins should come back and do like a G, like a new generation as well. These are obviously like mainstream mainstream shows, but yeah. there are like animated shows that have had like really good LGBTQ representation. We're working towards better TV for kids that is more friendly, that yeah. is inclusive. That's a really good point. Like that kind of goes back to like our B list is like yeah. just the idea of the whole sexiness. Like yeah, that's yeah. great for like me. When when I watched those, like I was like 18, 19, like I was definitely mm -hmm. in that stage of sexual learning. When I was maybe 12, 13 and like younger, I want something a little more yeah. friendly. Something yeah. that like, if your like parents walked in, they wouldn't think you were watching pornography. I All I can <laughs> think of when you said that was the Glee, like, cause I'm like, well Glee's kind of family friendly. And then I thought of like the Britney episode where like Santana and Britney with the sn snakes and stuff. I'll oh. put it on the screen. So that is not that is not family friendly. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with our list. I think we should keep it as is. Oh, I think you did a great job picking shows. I would love to do this again with like potatoes. 
Maybe on your channel. <laughs> I was gonna say with like lesbian singers. Oh, but that honestly, would be so I good. Always was like, but they're all so good. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please subscribe. Also go check out our TikToks. We make a lot of gay content over there. Lots of gay. We also have a vlog channel, a gaming channel. All that stuff is linked super below. And I will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye guys.